getting back to the Orthodox Church on a, a Canadian level, uh, had a number of, uh, I guess, commentaries I've made in recent months that have stimulated a little bit of debate, some of it controversial, about the Orthodox Church in Canada, its leadership and its future. Uh, as you know, this, there is a sabor that's being held in the middle of July, a couple of weeks' time, uh, where hopefully some of these issues will be discussed, though I, I don't kind of, I, I don't really have high hopes that uh, the discussion will get into the existential issues that, uh, that threaten the further existence of the Orthodox Church in Canada. I've seen some of the resolutions uh, and, and I, I kind of have guessed that what a lot of debate will center around and there's there's some kind of things that have kind of keep coming back support after this you know after support one of the issues for instance is this whole uh, calendar business you know should the Orthodox Church adopt the Gregorian calendar and catch up with the rest of the world or should it you know stay with the Julian calendar there's been an ongoing debate for uh, I don't know probably the last five six years about the, uh, the the title of the uh, the bishop the arch or the bishop the orthodox bishop that uh, controls or is in charge of the eastern eparchy uh, you know as to whether he is the bishop of toronto or bishop of york things of that nature uh, that's going to continue there is uh, ongoing debate about the uh, the management style and competence of the current consistory in in, in winnipeg uh, and that kind of creates some sub-issues, you know, should the church, uh, the management of the church uh, be left to a priest, because basically the chancellor who is the, the chief, I guess, executive officer of the Orthodox Church is always a priest. Uh, and, and as you know, in modern times with the kind of complexities of financing, administration, legal, management, communications, etc., are we not shortchanging ourselves by not having a professional uh, you know, CEO, chief administrative officer, whatever that has more skills and experience that are attuned to uh, you know, competently managing a, a large structure such as the Orthodox Church, which is, after all, aside from the theological aspect of it, it is a large organization, it's financial, strategic, uh, uh, and, and other complexities and, and, and needs that need to be addressed on an ongoing basis. And there has been a lot of complaints in, in uh, the past decade that these are not being effectively managed within the Orthodox Church. But I think, I, I think the real issues, you know, there's lots of these kind of niggly things, but there's some really existential issues which I feel are not being addressed that really should be addressed because, frankly, the, never mind the long-term future, the short-term future of the Orthodox, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Canada is being threatened. As you all know, uh, and I've mentioned this in, in previous analyses, the membership has shrunk significantly over the last two, three, four decades from a high of, uh, I think, 100, 120,000 members to something under 10,000 today. That is a huge, huge drop. And yet, I don't see any clear vision or mission being voiced by the Orthodox Church higher authorities as to how they're going to combat this challenge. There is no vision, you know, when you, you try and find what is the vision of the Orthodox Church in Canada, all I can see is basically survival. You know, the church is trying to survive, uh, you know, all of these assaults on its membership base and its finances, etc. But to me, survival is not a vision, it's not a goal, it's not a name, it's, it's basically inertia. The Orthodox Church and its leadership, and that starts with the Metropolitan and the Bishop, have to enunciate a clear-cut vision of how they're going to turn the Orthodox, the, fate of the fortunes of the Orthodox Church around. How are they going to stop the decrease in membership, the eroding away of the membership base? How are they going to attract significant numbers of new con converts, converts, new parishioners, whatever? What, what strategies do they have for that? I, I haven't seen or heard any of that kind of, of stuff. The other is that I have not seen any direction or vision as to how they propose to put the financial and administrative uh, structures of the church in order. There have been a lot of complaints, particularly in the last five years, that the consistory is not doing an adequate job 
at managing the affairs of the church, uh, the finances, to just basic administrative things, response, communication, etc. The finances of the church are archaic. Like when you consider the times that we are living in, the primary way that the church is financing itself is the old collection plate, the tatsa that gets passed around at you know Sunday mass, where people put their you know tunies and fibers and tens and twenties or whatever. But that obviously is not a, a stable, uh, predictable source of income that you can keep going. That you, can, you can rely on. Um, there basically needs to be a, a, a deep down look at this whole issue of how to finance the church over the long term future. And there's a concept that's uh, being adopted by a lot of other uh, religious organizations, this concept of stewardship, which involves uh, ways of, of, of ensuring that there are stable streams of financing to uh, ensure the, the growth of the church, to maintain the church, and to fund growth objectives. Uh, some Orthodox churches individually, I know, are, are trying to adopt that. Uh, my own church in, in Oshawa in particular has taken a look at it and started adapting, uh, adopting that as well as uh, tools such as uh, pre-authorized deductions. Instead of you know, donating every Sunday via the church plate, you do it through automatic withdrawals from your bank account. That way you, know, you can ensure that the church gets the same amount from you every month and uh, you know, the, the, the collections do not vary from week to week or, or month to month. And the church needs that kind of stability. It needs to employ some of these new banking financing tools in order to stabilize its, its income streams. Um, that has to be dealt with, I think, on a national level and you know, not individual little initiatives here and there uh, that may vary from parish to parish.